Hey, how's it going? Ever have that dilemma where you overpack whenever you travel to drizzly, rainy, cold, or slightly snowy places? Well, I've got some tips and tricks up my sleeve to help you pack efficiently and fill your luggage up to its full but not overflowing potential. Keep in mind that these tips will work best for locations where the weather will be hovering around 50 to 30 degrees. Anything lower than that, you're going to have to bring extra reinforcement. Let me know if you're interested in seeing a video for even colder or more severe weather. And before we move on, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any travel, style, or food related videos from me in the future. I'm warm and toasty in my ice blue sweater, even though it's September, so let's get into the tips. You've got to get from point A to B and you want to make sure that your feet don't freeze or get wet. I say the types of shoes that you pack really make a difference on whether or not your feet are still happy or hating you by the end of the day. So my recommendations for a trip that's about one to two weeks, I'll go through a laundry list of shoe essentials. First up, we have booties. These are two of my favorites. As you can tell, these are pretty well loved. Make sure you get yourself non-porous material booties so that rain or moisture doesn't get in easily so you don't have damp feet the entire day. And if you don't have any room for pumps or don't want to wear pumps where it might be cold, at least bring booties with heels so that you can wear them in the evening time with a nice dress if you do go out for a little soiree. Sneakers, make sure you bring a neutral color so they match everything in your wardrobe. I spoke about this a little bit before in my tips and tricks for plain relaxation video. For example, with these sneakers, I can just slip my feet in and out without untying it. And if I do need to secure it, at least momentarily, I can just open and close this Velcro strap. Not absolutely necessary, but if you do have some room, pop in a pair of heels into your bag. So for any happy hours or evening dinners, even if you're not a fancy person, for those unexpected fancy events, you do have a pair of heels and preferably get heels that are wider so that even if you're walking around all day, even when you're not wearing heels in the evening time, at least when you primp yourself up and you walk around spending the night about town, your feet won't be dying from the pointy heels. And finally, have a pair of flip-flops or sandals. They don't need to be this big or thick. These are actually my house slippers, but ideally slippers that you can fold and slip into your luggage so that when you get to the hotel or anywhere you're staying, you can use them in your room. Or if you need to make a quick run out to get ice for the room or just go to the corner store and you don't want to get completely dressed up, you have something to just quickly place your feet in and then head out the door. Comment below and let me know if you don't like walking around hotels barefoot. Me personally, I don't know who's been stepping on the floor and I know they most likely clean it, but still, I don't know. I guess I'm a bit of a germaphobe. On to outerwear. I'd say the most important tip here is to layer. When you're outside, it's going to be cold, so you're going to be wearing more layers. And when you're inside, you'll be overheating, you might get sweaty, and so all that moisture will be trapped. So whatever you're wearing during the day, think about how you can put more on top or take off pieces. To layer on top of my sweater, sweatshirt, whatever I'm wearing as the base, I zip up my Uniqlo jacket on top. This is super lightweight and it's made of a down material, so it's already fairly warm as the first layer. I talked about this in my School Commuters Essentials video. Check that out if you're a freshie or a new university student for some commuter tips. This is also water repellent, so even if I don't layer anything on top before it gets warm outside, I can just wear this and I'll be pretty cozy. Now if I need an extra layer of warmth, I put on a heavier jacket on top of the Uniqlo sweater. In Japan, I actually wore this long straight jacket on top of the Uniqlo jacket when it was cold in the evening time and it worked really well. I was warm and if I walked into a store or restaurant, I just took off however many layers I needed to cool down. Unless it's frigid outside, I would recommend not bringing very heavy, thick jackets because you'll have to carry them around to other locations that you travel to. It could get heavy and they're not as versatile. And then one of the most useful outerwear pieces I have is this raincoat. What I love is that this raincoat isn't too thick so I can wear the Uniqlo jacket underneath or any other jackets. At the same time, I can repel rainwater 
and still be able to walk around. Invest a little bit in the raincoat. This one was pricey, but this one has deep pockets so I can put my money or passport in any of the pockets if I'm walking around during the day and, and want to have quick access. It has a hood to cover my head. And this one even has inside pockets. So anything that I need to conceal, I can put it in this pocket. And it's a very deep pocket. Look, my hand can go inside. Now for clothes, excluding outerwear, keeping your noggin, how many outfits can I make out of a single shirt, a single legging, a single skirt? And I would choose to make either the tops neutral or the bottoms neutral. And then for the opposite, being more colorful or have patterns if you want. Unless you always are neutrals, then you got it made. But as I pack, I would think about how to pair specific items. For example, I always like to bring long sweaters so that I can wear them with leggings and jeans or a skirt. If I'm bringing a blouse, then I can pair that with a skirt or jeans underneath. The goal is not to overpack or bring items that are just one complete outfit. A jumpsuit, for example, a long sweater dress, those are already complete. You can just throw them into your luggage. Let me know if you want me to create a follow-up video on how to create multiple outfits from one piece, whether it be a shirt, jeans, or a skirt. Your ultimate goal is to make as much as you can with as little as possible. Okay, socks. So if you're going on a week's trip, I would recommend bringing at least five pairs of socks, especially if you're going to be running into a laundry or dryer during a long trip. Bring as much as you can fit, since unfortunately you can't really go barefoot that much during the winter time, unless you're a massagist and you walk outside in flip flops in like 20 degree weather. If you like to wear skirts like me, remember to bring some knee socks or stockings. So not only can you match them better to your heels if you want to look a little bit more dressed up, but at the same time they're usually smaller than socks and easier to stuff into your luggage. The number one thing to keep in mind for socks is if you plan on walking around, doing a lot of strolling, hiking, running, get socks that allow moisture to escape and have breathability. For example, I have these hiking specific socks from REI and basically they keep your feet dry, they keep them warm when it's cold outside and they keep them cool when it's hot outside. So they regulate the temperature of your feet and make sure it's not too stuffy down there so you can keep on going. They're very comfy because of this smart wool material that they're made of. Bring one pair of gloves. I lost the left hand to this glove so I'm gonna have to find that. But at least for me, my hands get cold very easily and when they're cold, my entire body feels cold. So make sure you have a pair on you and if you can, find ones where either you can expose the fingers if you need to use Google Maps to find something or use your phone for anything else or get the ones with the smart touch tip so that even while you're wearing your gloves, you can still navigate on your touch screen for whatever device you're using. And a side tip, make sure to moisturize your hands. Finally, this could be a little burdensome and get in the way, but trust me, they go a long way in keeping you warm, toasty, and comfortable. But make sure to bring at least a scarf or two scarves if possible. One of a neutral color and the other could be more crazy colorful as long as it matches your wardrobe so that you can keep your neck warm and your chest area warm. I feel like my upper body is always cold so I like to cover up this area as much as possible. It really helps you retain heat. Especially if you're going to be doing some sightseeing outside for extended periods a scarf will go a long way in making sure that you can keep on going, keep on trekking forward. And it's an accessory to layer on top of your jackets that you can easily take off once you're inside and it's a lot toastier. I'm uploading a video actually later this week on my scarf collection so you can get some inspiration or ideas of the kinds of scarf that you want to bring or buy for your trip. So make sure you stay tuned for that video later on this week. Woo, we got to the end of the video! Wherever you're going, if you're vacationing this fall or winter, I hope you stay safe and warm and that these tips are useful for you as you pack. Please let me know which tip was the best for you and if you have additional tips, let us know in the comments below. I read everything. I love your guys' feedback. Thank you so much for your support. Have a lovely, fantastic time 
and I'll see you next time. Bye!